Welcome to Let's Make a Game Platformer, episode 45. In the last episode, I've added the feature of placing a block uh, in an editor when the user clicks a mouse button and also drawing an outline of a block whenever something gets, whenever mouse moves in the editor. In this episode, I'd like to add similar functionality for objects, so levers, doors, platforms, enemies, and so on and so forth. Uh, but before I go to that, I'd like to explain a couple of changes I've done in the meantime between the episodes. Uh, that's because I've been on vacation, so I didn't, couldn't really record anything. However, I did some major improvements in performance and also uh, fixed or maybe make, made some stuff easier. For example, there are two major changes uh, that I've done. First of all, I've the texture registry no longer requires you to register the texture. So, other than before, like before, you had to register every texture you'll be using to create to be able to create an atlas. Right now, we don't have to do this. Instead, the atlas is updated on the fly with all the new textures you ask for. So, no longer this has to be done upfront. All the texture registered, you just say, "I want this texture in this atlas." And if this texture is already there, it returns it to you. If not, it updates the atlas with this texture and returns it to you. So this is much, much easier now to work because you don't have to scan everything and figure out what's to be created where. And you can't add new textures on the fly. But now you can do that. This is one, one change, major change I've done. Actually, one of the two changes actually you'll be able to see if you take a look at the code of the platformer, is the core in set itself. Second change that I've done is that the context, so the menu context, game and editor context, can now have parent. So you can specify that uh, the menu context has some other context which is a parent of this. This is uh, to allow sharing system systems across contexts. So for example, before this, we had texture atlas in each context. So we had texture atlas in many contexts, texture atlas in Gaplin context, editor, and so on. The same for shape providers, and the component manager, and all the stuff that is uh, that is really static and doesn't really require to be instanced per context. So what I've, the change I've done is that I create a parent context here which contains all those things that are very common to all the uh, all the contexts and that doesn't hold any state itself and doesn't require any other com components in it. And then I pass this as a parent context to every context that I create after, so the menu, gameplay, and the editor context. So the this, first of all, fixed allows me to fix two things. So... Uh, First of all, we don't have all these copies of all the stuff, text atlas, shape provider, prefab manager, component manager, and everything else. We don't have the the duplication of these objects in memory, uh, which saves memory, of course, and also some processing is faster because of that as well, because we don't have these multi multitude of same co the same objects in memory. And second thing that allowed me to fix is that before the audio system was in the gameplay context and the controls for the audio systems were in the menu context and they were passing the changes um, all, all the way around through the game state uh, system. So now because I moved the sound, uh, it's called audio system, moved it to parent profile here, what happens instead is that the same audio system instance is used, used and visible in each context, so uh, it no longer lives only in the gameplay context, and because of that I can uh, play sounds from the gameplay context without any, I just say inject audio ma manager, and I can modify the volume from the menu context, just also injecting audio manager because they both receive the same uh, same instance of an object. So this is the two major changes I've done and 
probably the two changes that are visible at the moment with the code. Uh, today I'd like to show you a third showcase, a third change I've done. And the change is that that the components now can have, uh, before they only were allowed to have very simple uh, object types which are which exist and in the JSON itself. Right now you can, for example, specify here vector3, so I can specify very complex objects. And the way it is done is that I have to drop in a vector converter, which implements this interface. And the component manager is scans the everything that is inside of the um, the the classes that are specified by the Java package provider. It scans all the classes for all the all these packages for classes that implement this interface and this converter allows to convert from string to the object and from the object to string. So whenever I define this uh, component in a prefab, I do it in the following way. So this is, uh, by the way, the component that I've written also between the, com between the episodes. And this component allows me to Specify so this is similar to the blocking editor component. So we define the blocks that are displayed in the editor, and this one is this is for used for displaying objects that can be added to as the level that are in, in a, that should be displayed in the editor. And so they have four fields: display name, which is uh, name that should be displayed as the identifier for this object. Render size, which is basically the so bef before we were rendering a cube of one by one one by one, whenever we have something selected or not. And right now, if if we so let's say that we are have selected door. Door are thin and very tall by default. So to 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 height size to um, meters or units of height and very thin in the x direction so this specified how how big the bounding box that's going to be displayed when you move your mouse should be and this this d defines how it the bounding box should be translated in, in a, uh, regards to the location of the mouse or the 00 zero 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 coordinate that we were normally had for block and the third one is defines Whenever we place something in the in the context or in the in the level, how it should be moved because some of the objects here that we have prefabs objects, some of them um, require to be moved by 0 0.5, for example. So this is something that we're going to be adding here uh, because this is uh, defining all the bounding boxes for all the objects that are that have this. And all the names coming up would be probably slow if I do it on in the video. Instead, I did it between the video, between the episodes, and I defined, came, went ahead and defined all the uh, bounding boxes for it. Okay, so let's get to it. So first of all, I like what I'd like to do is um, because the selection renderer will be using the same information that is going to be used for placing the actual. Uh, object in the scene and also at the moment it uses the same method for mouse tracked as we had in the digital logic here therefore I'd like to merge these two and to do that I'll just cut this part from the rendering system and add it here so first of all I have a duplicate of mouse tracked this is something that you can remove now, luckily. And it has to implement lifecycle system. And use this. Okay, so 
Let me now delete this old system. This no longer needed. And make sure that everything still works. Okay, so this works and placing also work works. Okay, uh, so another thing I'd like to change is at the moment when you have the snapping on, the mouse moves, the bounding box moves one unit at a time. I'd like to be able to change it to be whatever I defined and let me specify that snap size. Let's go with quarter of block, so 0 0.25. And the way to do this here is to, before the rounding, divide it by the snap size, and after the rounding, after the rounding, multiply by snap size. Okay, so let me apply it to all of those, all the directions. Okay, and let me make sure now that it still is working. So now the snap should be uh, one fourth of a block. So I have greater accuracy with with snapping. So I don't have to resort to the shift option that allows me to do it freely. So right now I can have four positions of it. So it's going to be much easier, better control. I can, for example, do something like this. This and if I still want to do a more fine-tuned control, I can do this. Okay, so that's the first two things I wanted to do. And now I can actually go back to whatever I was planning to do, so adding the objects. So for that, um, I will have a couple of things here. So first of all, we will have the editor system the menu system in the editor. I'll extract the method to create create block window. Okay. And I'll do the same for object window. So I will have here objects window. And I'll add it here. I have to rename this to blocks window, not block. Okay, so I have a duplicate of this. And it's going to be called objects window with the name objects. Objects window object table. Object button. And in here, rather than have selected block button, it's going to be selected button. Because we'll have them both for, we use this, we'll use this for both for objects and then blocks. So basically, both buttons in the object one and in the block window will be exclusive. So only one can be selected at a time. And so we want we want to do here in the objects window rather than look for block in editor, we're gonna be look for looking for block block not block object in editor component and we will have this here. And in here, we'll also have all the inf other information extracted. So, object in editor get render size, object in editor get render translate, and object in editor get placement translate. Okay, now I'll have a new, uh, new event, object type selected. And in addition to prefab name, you want to have here three vector three, vector three objects. So 
render size, render translate, placement translate, I think that's what was the name was, placement translate, yes, okay. And I will add these to constructor. And the size and the state frame placement translate and create getter for these. Okay, so now in here when the some object is selected from the objects window, other than block types selected, we'll send an object type selected method, a will event passing all the information. Actually, I can pass nulls here. Okay, so with nothing is selected, let me pass nulls. Okay, so we got this part covered. So our menu is now this should be displaying both. Oh, now it's going to be displaying them. And so the next thing we want to do is, um, first of all, track this. So receive event object type selected and i want to store it so last selected object type equals this and i want to create field with this information i'll move it to this one, so they are together. Okay, so we now know what something is selected, um, and whenever an object is supposed to be, maybe first let's do rendering. So, if so, um, in here, if last selected block type equals not equals null, we do this, otherwise we do model instance, transform, translate last mouse position, so by the position of the mouse, and then by the position of the, ah, this will be last selected object type is not null, and in here we have to do one more check get prefab name is not null, we do this, otherwise we do this. So, because if something was unselected, the object type, we were setting, sending the event with null prefab name, so we have to nullify it here if we get null prefab name with the object. So in here it's simpler because in here we had the this had contained a null and we stored only this only a prefab name and here we store the whole object as the whole event. Okay, so object type get render size um, and we want to get last selected object type get translate and scale it by Render size. Maybe I should. Inline it. Okay, so translate by this and scale by this. And finally render it. Okay, so let's give it a try. So what should happen? First of all, we should see all the objects that can be placed in the scene in a separate window from the object. Okay, that's too big. Okay, so we have all the objects available. Awesome. Yeah, we can still place blocks. And okay, something did not work. Ah, it shouldn't be placement translate. It should be render translate. Okay, let's run again.
So we have objects, I can place blocks, and then they are exclusive, so if I click here, the other one gets unselected. And then lever is this size, and door is this size. We have an out we see outline of everything. We have signal indicator, which is this size. Uh, what else is there? Is the stone platform, which is this size by default. Okay, so this is working. Okay, now let's uh, work on placing actual objects. So when place object is called, if object type selected is not null, then you have to place it, right? Okay, so simple. Similar to that one, get object coordinates, uh, position. However, in here, we want to add the uh, last uh, selected object type mm, placement translate uh, not new vector okay uh, last selected object type get placement translate so in here we'll be doing placement translate dot x. So we'll be adding the specified translation that was specified by the object itself. Y and Z. Okay, so this is the position and object coordinates put position um, last selected object type get prefab name level component set object coordinates this is this is a setter that I've added also between the between the episode here I've added the setter for it um, so in here we pass the object coordinates and finally we save the changes and so in here to apply the changes to the to be rendered and to be in the level that we actually have, we have to rebuild the mesh. In here, this is different. We have to just create the object in the spawn the object in the scene, and to do it, uh, we can use the class we had we had before, which was the platformer entity spawner. So in here, we say platformer entity spawner create entity at and okay so this is, has to be x y z and x y and z prefab name And by default, we don't want to pass any changes, so we pass the empty map. Okay, so that should work, I think. So let's take a look. Okay, so we have the stone platform. And on top of the platform, I have to create level lever. Okay, something has failed. Okay, placement translate is placement translate is null. So let's fix that. Uh, object in editor component default Okay, so we have stuff working. Okay, now let's add maybe door. Okay, 
so stuff is working I think the star is the thing that's not going to be working properly yeah so I have to specify for star and for the bugs I have to specify the placement translate and I have to move it by 0 0.5 in the x direction and I believe the bugs also have to be moved let me check that in the levels I think this one has a bug yeah has to be moved on in the white direction as well okay so bug x y and z sorry z, z direction not y okay same in here and in the star itself I think star is also moved yes okay so let's test these last remaining objects and see that everything is working fine this and let's place a star somewhere okay okay bug okay bug with gun awesome okay that's it for this episode uh, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel you can also follow me on twitter link is in the description thanks for watching bye